فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم The way that Musa alayhi salatu was salam gave him a reminder. Did Musa speak to him in a harsh way? Did he speak to him in a good way? Did Fir'aun respond with even more arrogance? Did he? Can we say that Nabi Allah Musa, you brought about more fitna? No. No, yeah, ikhwan. And this is what sometimes happens. You give a reminder to a group of people in the best way they ever is. And they become more stubborn and they become more hard-headed. That's not on your scale. It's got nothing to do. If you took the right way and you brought about the haq in the best way that they should and you follow the sharia in it, if the person becomes even more transgressive, it's not on your scale. It's not on, it's not on your scale. That's if you've taken the correct way. But if you brought fasad with lack of hikmah and you didn't take the qawaid of amr bil ma'roof wa nahi anil munkar, you saw somebody smoking and you slapped the cigarette out of his hand and then he brought out a knife and he stabbed you. Ah, you're a corrupted person. Why are you talking to him for? Sah? You're the problem. Ah, you are the problem. Well, who told you to slap the cigarette out of his hand? Sahih? Some people, they see people coming out of the clubs and they shout at them, what are you doing? Don't go leave our neighborhoods. And then who, who made you a responsible for people who come out of clubs? Who made it your job? To patrol the London streets, huh? And he says, Amalek, that's not your job. Are you with me? This is corruption and it's fatad. Are you with me, brothers? Fahashara, he gathered his people. Fanada, and he called out by saying what? This is what it Fir'aun claimed. I am your supreme Lord. Now I ask you a question. When Fir'aun said, Ana Rabbukum al-A'la, did he believe this? <coughs> no. He never believed this. Are you with me, brothers? An atheist, however much they claim that they believe there's no God, they don't believe it. This is what gets them very angry. Sah? To say you don't believe what you're saying. Are you with me, brothers? Why? لِأَنَّ the fitra won't accept that. And Allah tells us in the Quran, فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا The fitra here that I, the ayah mentions are two things. The first is what? مَعْرِفَةُ الْحَقِّ Knowing the truth. The fitra knows the truth. Second thing is حُبَّ Loving it وَإِرَادَتِهِ And wanting to go that towards the truth. The fitra has those two components. You with me, brothers? Example that the heart, the fitra knows the truth. Abdullah ibn Salam, the noble companion. When Abdullah ibn Salam came to the city of Medina, what did he say? The Prophet came to the city of Medina, everybody ran to the Prophet. I was from those who ran to the Prophet. He said, well, فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ لِي وَجْهُ When I looked at the Prophet's face and his face became clear to me, عَرَفْتُ أَنَّ وَجْهَهُ لَيْسَ بِوَجْهِ كَذَّبُ How did he know? What is the evidence that he knew that the Prophet's face was in the face of Allah? Fitra. Abdullah ibn Salam, this noble companion, he recognized that this man is the man who Allah sent from high above by seeing him. The fitra is what set him. وَلِذَلِكَ Even Mu'ad ibn Jabal, what did he say to the man? Who said to, Mu'ad said, take the truth from whoever it comes from. Even if a dim-witted, ignorant person says to you the truth, take it from him. What did he say? How do I know that he spoke the truth? He said, إِنَّ عَلَى الْحَقِّ نُورًا The haqq has light. Your fitra and that heart will go together. Sahih? You see the atheist sometimes, something hits his finger, he goes, oh, oh my God, what happened to you? You didn't believe in God. That's not him speaking. What's speaking? Fitrah spoke. The fitrah spoke. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed it in every single person. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Fir'aun, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًا Allah says, وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا His heart knew it. Even Nabi Allah Musa, what did he say to Fir'aun? لَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ مَا أَنزَلَ هَؤُلَى إِلَى رَبُّ السَّمَاوَةِ Fir'aun, you know no one said this down except Allah. You know it. So Fir'aun knew all of this. He understood it. But stubbornness and hard-headedness is why he didn't want to take it. 
Faqala, he said to them, Ana rabbukumul a'la. I am your supreme Lord. Look what Allah did to him. Brothers, Allah has a sunan. Allah has a way. لا تبدل ولا تتغير. It doesn't change for anybody. Allah will give you the chance. The truth is brought to you. You're, you're warned. You're advised. The truth has been brought to you. Two people are not excused. Pay attention. If you're ignorant, are you excused? You are excused because Allah says in the Quran, as He said in the Quran, "وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا." We are not ones who punish a people unless we send a messenger to them, meaning until the proof is established on them. But many people have misunderstood the concept of ignorance as an excuse. Is with the condition there is no negligence on your side in regards to knowing the truth. If there's a local masjid in your area, and the truth is being spread there and it's being taught there, and you're never willing to go there and you don't give no consideration to it, and then you say, I never learned how to pray, no one's ever taught me how to pray, this is not an excuse. Are you with me? Ignorance is an excuse when you put every effort on the table and you could find no one to teach you or no one to, to go through you with it. Are you with me? So, The prophets and every person, the proof is established on them. Nabi Lahim Musa, what did he do? He advised him. He told him what you're upon is wrong. Get away from it. Stay away from it. Pract and uh, empirical evidence was given to him. Something he can see with his own two eyes. Fir'aun chose not to take it. What did Allah do to him? Many of us have this. Quran is being brought to us. Our parents tell us this is a halal. Stay away. Haram. Stay away from it. This is halal. Do this. Stay. Then signs are given to us. Signs come to us. Our friend dies next to us. Look, he dropped. He died with Khamr. He died with Khamr in his hand. Okay. The angel of death is, is talking to me here. He's sending me a message, but I don't. I, I dismiss it. Hey, then later when a punishment comes from comes to he comes to you from Allah, every sign has come to you. Why haven't you taken it? What were you waiting for? Allah says in this ayah, فَأَخَذَهُ اللَّهُ Allah grabbed him or Allah seized him. Allah seized him. Fir'aun. In what? For the last and the first. Allah seized Fir'aun. Destroyed Fir'aun. For the first and the last. Here is where the scholars differed. Aqwal came regarding what's meant by the first and what's meant by the, the second. Why did they differ here? A lot of the times we need to understand the sabab al-khilaf. The sabab al-khilaf is Dhukira wasfun, a description has been mentioned, and the thing that this description can fall to is so much. Are you with me? A description is mentioned. The ayah mentions the description which is first and second. And first and second here can apply on many things. So that everybody grabs something and they say, This is what's meant by it. The ulama of Tamufas Tafsir. And there are four views. The first view is those who said the first and the second means. The first statement that Fir'aun said, Allah grabbed him for it. And the second state, the last statement that he said, Allah also grabbed him for it. What was the first statement that he said? When he said, Ma alim tu lakum, I don't know for you guys. Ilahan ghayri. Min ilahin ghayri. I do not know for you an ilah other than me. That was the first he said. And the second one he said, Ana rabbukum al-a'la. I'm your supreme Lord. So Allah grabbed him for the first, which is, Ma alim tu lakum min ilahin ghayri. And the, sec and the second, which is what? That's one view. This view is attributed to Ibn Abbas. It's also attributed to Mujahid. It's also attributed to Sha'bi. And it's also attributed to Bahak. The second one is Allah. The ula here means the dunya and the akhirah. This view is the view Hassan al-Basri, Qatada, they both pushed. And this is the view that Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, said, This is the strongest opinion, without a doubt. Ah, this is what he says. Why? Because Allah said in the Quran, That Fir'aun, we're going to let your flesh remain. What was that? Well, how did he die? By what? Drowning. Drowning. That was adab. That's the first dunya. How Allah destroyed him. 
And the Akhirah was what? Akhirah is Qawluhu Ta'ala وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةَ أَدِخِلُوا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَذَبِ When the Day of Judgment comes, put Fir'aun in what? أَشَدَّ الْعَذَبِ The severest of Adam. So they said the first one was what? When he was drowned. That's the dunya. And in the hereafter is what? أَشَدَّ الْعَذَبِ As the ayah said. That قول ibn Kathir pushed he strengthened it after mentioning all of the opinions. And Ibn Kathir rarely does he say, and this is the view that's the strongest, la shakafi. He doesn't use that majority of the times unless he believes it's what? To him, there's no reason for another view to be taken. The, the third opinion is that the ula here means takribu wa isyanu. His disobedience and, dis and disbelief is that. And the second one is when he said, Ana Rabbukum ala. The first one when he, فَكَذَّبَ وَعَصَى is the first. And when he said, Ana Rabbukum ala, that's the, that's the last. That's the akhirah that's meant here. This view is strengthened by Abu Razim. The fourth opinion is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, أَخَذَهُ اللَّهُ مَكَانَ الْآخِرَةَ وَالْأُولَى The ula means the first of his sins that he ever did until the last sin that Fir'aun ever did. For his first act of disobedience to the last of his act of disobedience, Allah grabbed him for all of it. That view is pushed by Mujahid, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says to us, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ In that which took place regarding the affairs of Fir'aun, there's a lesson in it. But who is it a lesson for? It's a lesson لمن يخشى whoever would fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The story of Fir'aun and how Allah destroyed him. And the way Allah dealt with Fir'aun is a lesson for who brothers and sisters? And who is it a warning for? It's a warning for whoever would fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is it? Fir'aun was one of the most powerful individuals on this earth. Allah destroyed him. Allah took him out. You who hasn't got that strength. Fir'aun, his body had to be saved. Why? Because Banu Israel still thought he might live. So they can see that Fir'aun is dead. Awakas. Look at his body. Check it. There he is. He's dead right in front of you. Are you with me, brothers? Until they see Fir'aun is dead, that's how much. Allah is in the Quran, He terrorized them and they obeyed him. He subjugated them on a level that they would never ever dare to speak against Fir'aun in any way, form or shape. Are you with me, brothers? His body was thrown out on the earth's surface. They saw it. Fir'aun is dead. This is a man who claimed his ilah, his everything. They obeyed him. They feared him. They couldn't move without him. Are you with me, brothers? Allah destroyed him. Every individual who, who is tyrant, Allah deals with him like that. This is sunnah of Allah. Are you with me, brothers? It doesn't matter the name of the individual. It can be Abdullah, it can be Ahmed, it can be Ismail. It doesn't matter. Allah always deals with them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always he has. Are you with me, brothers? But there's a, this is a lesson. The person would think now, in nafi dalika, all of that which has been mentioned, la ibratan, there are lessons in it, liman yaksha, there are lessons and a mu'ibah, for whoever's going to take it as a lesson. The, the person who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment and the way Allah deals with them. And then Allah says after that, a antum, a shaddu khalqan amissama, banaha, are you more difficult in terms of creation? Or is the heaven? Allah constructed it well. He says in this ayah, "Aantum, are you a shaddu khalqan? Are you more difficult in creation, or is the sama more difficult in creation? Nothing is difficult to Allah, but just think about it. This sama that stands with no pillars, we're traveling days and after days through it. Which one's more complicated in our eyes, this one or us? Sama is more complicated." لَخَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ خَلْقِ النَّاسِ The creating of the sama is greater than the creating of creation, or of the humans. So here Allah is trying to say to them, if you guys claim, or disbelievers, 
that you guys have logic and you think because you're not going to take the kalam of Allah. Allah is saying to them, think here, the sama that's above you, Allah is the one who created it. Why would he struggle to create you? This is something you will always find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always uses the sama in terms of creation when he's talking about us. أَأَنْتُمْ are you أَشَدُّ خَلْقًا Are you more difficult in creation? أَمِ السَّمَاء or the, seven, or the heavens? بَنَاهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constructed it the way it is. This is a response in their statement which they said what? أَإِذَا كُنَّ عِظَامًا نَخِرَةً This ayah is a response to their statement which is أَإِذَا كُنَّ If we are decayed bones are going to be resurrected again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he then says, رَفَعَ سَمْكَهَا فَسَوَّاهَا He raised its ceiling and he proportioned it. فَسَوَّاهَا means it, he proportioned it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word سَمْكَهَا means ceiling. وَأَغْطَشَ لَيْلَهَا وَأَخْرَجَ طُحَاهَا وَأَغْطَشَ لَيْلَهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he darkened its night وَأَخْرَجَ الضُّحَاهَا And he extracted its brightness. Here's a question now. The word وَأَغْتَشَ لَيْلَهَا لَيْلَهَا is a pronoun. This pronoun is going back to what was previously mentioned. And what was previously mentioned? السماء. The السماء was what was mentioned. So why is the night being referred back to the السماء? Why is it being taken back to the السماء? The reason why is because the السماء through it, the light, the nur of the shams comes through it. And that's what brings about darkness, and that is what brings about, that is what brings about uh, brightness. وَأَغْطَشَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He darkened its night. وَأَخْرَجَ الضُّحَاهَا And He extracted its brightness. وَالْأَرْضَ and the earth بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ ضَحَاهَا And after that, He spread the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْأَرْضَ and the earth بعد ذلك after that ضحاها الله سبحانه وتعالى he spread the earth the word ضحاها means what بسط الأرض الله spread the earth here there's an إشكال there's an issue here الله سبحانه وتعالى he says والأرض and the earth بعد ذلك ضحاها he spread it after that after what after he created what the سماء because the سماء was already spoken about right أَأَنْتُمْ أَشَدُّ خَلْقًا أَمِ السَّمَاءِ Sama was spoken about. And then after that, what does Allah say? وَالْأَرْضَ and the earth بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ دَحَاهَا After that, He spread it. So the scholars, they say, how do you reconcile between that and the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ Allah is the one who created أَمْ هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا Allah created everything on this earth for you. All of it. ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went above his throne. Are you with me, brothers? How do you reconcile between that? Are you with me, Andy? Uh, that verse. Or the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلْ أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَكْفُرُونَ بِالَّذِي آيَةَ سُورَةُ الشُّعْرَ سُورَةُ الشُّعْرَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, سُورَةُ فُصِّلَةُ Allah says, which in the ayah, what does Allah mention? He says, قُلْ أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَكْفُرُونَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَ الْأَرْضَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ وَتَجْعَلُونَ لَهُ أَنْدَادَ ذَلِكَ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَا فِيهَا أَمَّا مِنْ فَوْقِهَا وَبَارَكَ فِيهَا وَقَدَّرَ فِيهَا أَقْوَاتَهَا فِي أَرْبَعَةِ أَيَّامٍ سَوَاءً لِلسَّائِلِينَ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ وَهِيَ دُخَانٌ فَقَالَ لَهَا وَلِلْأَرْضِ اتِيَا طَوْعًا أَوْ كَرَا قَالَتَا أَتَيْنَا طَائِعِينَ فَقَضَاهُنَّ سَبْعَ سَمَوَاتٍ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ وَأَوْحَى فِي كُلِّ سَمَاءٍ أَمْرَهَا وَزَيَّنَ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحَا وَحِفْظًا ذَلِكَ تَقْدِيرُ الْعَزِيزِ الْعَلِيمِ Here we learnt in that verse that the sama was created first uh, sorry the earth was created first and then the sama was created so how do we reconcile between the verses that are saying that the sama was created first are you with me? Which is this what we're in right now? And then the Ard, and the ones that say the Ard first, which is Surah Fusilat, and others they say that the Ard, then the Sama. How do you reconcile between the two? Abdullah ibn Abbas reconciled between it. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he reconciled between it. And there's two answers. The first answer is the answer of Habrul Ummah, Abdullah ibn Abbas. Abdullah ibn Abbas said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the earth in two days. Are you with me? He created this earth with what? Two days without spreading it. It wasn't spread. Created it, but he didn't spread it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went to the sama and he built it. 
Then he came back to the earth and he spread it. This is where the ayah comes. Well, arda ba'da dalika dahaha. Ibn Abbas said dahaha doesn't mean khalaqaha. It doesn't mean Allah created it. It means Allah spread it. Are you with me? That's one qawl and it's the qawl of Ibn Abbas. The second view is the view pushed by Mujahid and Suddi, rahimahumullah, that they say the word wal arda ba'da dalika. It doesn't mean after the sama. It means ma'a. Dalika dahaha. Because they said it can take each other's places. But we will say that opinion, it, there's no need to change the ba'da to the word ma'a. Are you with me? There's no need to, because we're able to reconcile between it. Wal arda and the earth. Ba'da dalika after that. Dahaha basat al arda. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He spread the earth. Akhraja minha. Allah extracted from it. Ma'aha water. Wa mar'aha. And it's pastures. And the fruits and nabatat that came from it. Allah brought it. This ayah shows that the water comes from where? From the ard. And there are other ayat in the Quran that show that the water comes from where? The sama. How do we reconcile between that? We will come to it in the ayats to come, inshaAllah ta'ala, in Surah 2 and Naml and other places. Akhraja minha ma'aha. He extracted from it its water. Wa mar'aha. The word mar' here, nabatat, the, the, the fruits and the crops. Wal jibala, and the mountains. Arsaha, he set it firmly on the earth. Wal jibala, and the mountains. Arsaha means what? He set the mountains on this earth firmly. He pegged it on the earth. The, uh, the mountains are meant to keep the earth from moving. When the mountains are on the earth, the earth doesn't move. The lands that have less mountains tend to have more earthquakes. So Allah is saying, I am the one who did this. I took mountains, I pegged them on this earth, so the earth doesn't move with its people. Why did I do that? Mata'allakum wa li an'amikum. I did all of this as a provision for you and your grazing livestock. I've made all of this a provision. For who? For you and your grazing livestock, your crop, your, your, your sheep, your lambs, your goats, your cows, all of that I did that for you. Mata. So you enjoy it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He did all of that. What is it that He's saying I did for all of you? By creating the sama. I did this for you. And then I also spreading wadahwil ardi and spreading the earth. I did that for you. I spread it for you. You can drive from one place to another. I did all of that. Pegging this mountain onto this earth firmly, I did this all for you guys. So you can benefit from it. So you can take your animals and your sheep and everything. Walk from one land to another. I did all of that for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he then moves on by saying, فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الطَّامَّةُ الْكُبْرَى But when there comes the greatest overwhelming calamity, Allah says, فَإِذَا when it comes, الطَّامَّةُ الْكُبْرَى The word الطَّامَّةُ الْكُبْرَى Here is what? The greatest overwhelming calamity that's going to befall you. The word فَإِذَا It needs a jawab, it needs a response. صح? It needs a response. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الطَّامَّةُ الْكُبْرَى If the great overwhelming calamity comes, huh? Huh? The jawab here and the response here are two. The first one is, the first response is, عَرَفُوا سُوءَ عَاقِبَةِ مُتَكْذِيبٍ بِالْبَعْثِ They're going to come to realize, those who didn't believe in the resurrection, the evil outcome that awaits them. That's one. And this is attributed to Al-Imam Al-Tabari, Al-Jir Al-Tabari, he attributes this statement to Al-Qasib ibn Al-Walid, Al-Kufi, who died the year 131, 141. The second one is, When the greatest overwhelming calamity comes, the people are going to be into two. A group who are going to head towards Jannah and a group that's going to help to head towards Hellfire. And that's in the context to come, they say. It's going to come for Amma Man Taga. That's one. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الطَّامَةِ الْكُبْرَى He's saying, the response is what? The transgressors are going to enter the hellfire and they're going to 
and the ones who are going to paradise, the ayats to come. That's the two view, that's the two answers that the ulama have given Rahimahullah. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الطَّامَّةُ الْكُبْرَى But when there comes the greatest overwhelming calamity, يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ مَا سَعَى The day when man, every individual, will remember that which they have put forth and that which they strove towards. يَوْمَ That day, يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ Every single one of us will remember what he did. That day when that overwhelming calamity befalls us, every single body is going to remember what they used to do. Why did I do that? Why didn't I just say this? Why didn't I act in this particular way? Every single body. This encompasses, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ insan It encompasses the believer and the, and the non-believer. Both parties are going to think that day. The ones who did good, they're going to be happy with their good. But they're also going to regret the good that they've left behind. And the other one. وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِمَنْ يَرَى and hellfire will be exposed for all these who see the hellfire, it will be brought. And you all know the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, which is found in Sahih Muslim. Jahannam will be brought that day. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in this ayah, And the hadith of the Prophet, that the Prophet said, يُؤْتَى بِجَهَنَّمَ يَوْمَئِذٍ That day, Jahannam will be brought. لَهَا سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ زِمَان It's going to have 70,000 ropes dangling from it. Every rope, there's going to be what? 70,000 angels that are pinning it down. Jahannam that day, Jahannam that day is, is trying to grab those, it knows its people, it knows its criminals, those who are meant to go into it, it knows it, so it's trying to grab them, but it has to be held down and it has to be pinned down. Angels who are very strong and very big are holding it down. Each rope, 70,000 angels are holding it down. Big creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jahannam, that day, all of its inhabitants are put in it. It swallows each and every one of them. It eats everybody. And then it still wants more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to the, to, to the hellfire, Halim talati, are you full? Are you, have you reached your full, full, fullest? And then it says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is there any more that you can give me that you can add on to it? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he places his foot inside it and Jahannam swallows itself after that. So there's nothing that can fill it up. Jahannam that day, nothing can fill it up. So may Allah wa ta'ala protect us from Jahannam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the inhabitants of Jannah. وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِمَنْ يَرَى Jahima that day is going to be exposed to everybody, Muslim and non-Muslim. This, the scholars, they differed. Some said it's all Muslim and non-Muslim, that's one view. Another group of scholars, they said it's only the disbelievers. Uh, they use the ayah, وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِلْغَاوِينَ The Jahim, Jahannam, was only made apparent to the Gawin, those who are strayed from the straight path. They specifically said it's them. But there's another ayah where Allah says, وَإِن مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ that the believers are also going to go through the top of the hellfire. So they're going to be exposed to it as well. Now. Allah is going to divide the people. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to mention to us al fariqain the two parties. The people, everybody strove right. One person strove towards good. Another person strove towards crime and transgression and disobedience of Allah. Allah says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى The one who transgressed, he exceeded his limits. He didn't work for this day. فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا The one who transgressed and he preferred the life of the world. He chose this dunya. He chose the cars. He chose women. He chose clothings over the akhirah. The akhirah meant nothing to him. So if he buys a house or mortgage, that's more important to him. If he has to, to do akhirah, Allah and his Prophet, what he, they say, it doesn't matter to him. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا مَا مَعَنَا وَآثَرَ What does the word آثَرَ mean? آثَرَ means قَدَّمَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا He gives precedence to the world, this world, over what? Gives it precedence to the reality of the hereafter. How long do you think you're going to live for in this world? 
The Prophet ﷺ said, أَعْمَارُ أُمَّتِي مَا بَيْنَ سِتِينَ وَسَبْعِينَ وَقَلِيلٌ مَنْ يَجُوزُ ذَلِكَ صح? 60 to 70. And little go over it. Are you going to disobey Allah for 70 years? 80 years? For a hellfire that you don't know how long you're going to stay in there for? Are you wise to go for 70 years of joy? For a adab, ya akhi. That's for a long time for you. One day you can't spend in Jahannam. One split second you can't take its pain. So a person needs to think. Don't be from those people who hear these verses. And then you're, you're الدنيا, If somebody tells you, tells you this is haram, my beloved brother, my beloved sister, this is haram, Allah prohibited it, stay away from it. You know why? Because you're saving yourself. You're doing yourself a favor. You're doing yourself a favor. فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Then indeed, hellfire will be his refuge. His ma'al. Ma'wa here means what? A ma'al. His final abode in which he's going to be in is the hellfire. Allah spoke to us about the disbelievers. He's also spoke about to us the criminals and the wrongdoers. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the righteous ones. The fariq thani He says, As for the one, He has feared the position of his Lord. And he prevented the soul from unlawful inclinations. And he prevented his soul from unlawful inclination. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةِ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Jannah is going to be his final abode. Jannah is where he's going to find refuge in. This person, two characteristics have been mentioned for him. The first one is, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ He feared the position of his Lord. He knows Allah has a position. So he fears him subhanahu wa ta'ala. This fear is privately, and this is also publicly. وَنَهَا nafsa. And he prevented his soul from any unlawful haram inclination that it may have. He prevented it from it. And he stopped his nafs from it. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ Then this individual has truly deserved what? فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى He deserves for Jannah and Paradise to be his final abode. And for him to stay there. He deserves that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give it to him. Allah then says, يَسْأَلُونَكَ النَّبِيُ اللَّهِ Muhammad, They ask you, عن الساعة they ask you about the hour أيان مرساها when is its arrival Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this verse that the disbelievers asking the Prophet alayhi salatu a question they said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when is the hour going to come the scholars they said and you have to pay attention to this the hour is not something that the disbelievers only asked even the Muslims asked are you with me brothers but when the Muslims ask their goal and their aim behind it is different from the aim and the objectives of the disbelievers asking. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Those who don't believe in it, those who disbelieve in it are hastening it. والذين, and the ones who believe in it, بها, those who believe in it, والذين, آمنوا, those who believe in it, they're scared of the day of judgment. When they are asking about it, they are scared of it. وَيَعْلَمُونَ And they know أَنَّهَا الْحَقِّ That it's the truth that is going to come, they know that. وَلِذَلِكَ You know the famous hadith al-Imamu al-Bukhari narrated in his sahih min hadith Abi Huraira that a Bedouin man came to the Prophet. Abu Huraira said, كُنَّا نَجْلِسُ عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ We were sitting with the Prophet. A Bedouin man walked in and he said to the Prophet ﷺ, When is the hour going to happen? And the Prophet ﷺ went quiet and carried on what he was saying. So the Sahabas within themselves, they said, some said, Sami'a fakariha. He heard what this Bedouin man said, but the Prophet disliked responding to him. Another group of the companions, they said, Lam yasma. He didn't even hear what this man said. When the Prophet finished his speech, he said, Aina ara sa'il. Where's the one who was asking the question? Where do I find him? And then he said, Ha ana ya Rasulullah, here I am. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that the hour is إِذَا ضُيَّعَةِ amana When the trust is forsaken. Then he said, وَكَيْفَ إِضَاعَتُهَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ How is it going to be forsaken? He said, إِذَا وُسِّدَ الْأَمْرُ إِلَى غَيْرِ أَهْلِهِ فَانْتَظِرِ السَّاعَةِ If matters are being placed in the wrong hands, wrong people are speaking about the religion, then let it wait for the hour to strike. 
But the disbelievers, when they are asking, they are asking of it ala sabil al istiza. They are asking about it out of mockery. They are asking about the hour because they're mocking it. Can God punish? Oh, why doesn't he just bring the hour right now? Let him do it now. Let him destroy us now. They're mocking it. That's why they are asking. So we learn a benefit from here. Two people may say something to you. One person will be accepted from them. And another person, no. Sahih? Is that double standard? Yeah? No. Are you with me? If somebody says to you, get out of here. Yeah, same statement. Two people said it to you. One person is going to be upset with them, another person is not going to be upset. Sah? When your enemy says that to you, get out of here. What does he really understand from it? And when your friend says it to you, huh? it's different. It's not double standard. وَلِذَلَكَ أَهْلُ السُنَّةِ have a qa'idah which is if there's some statements that if the ulama of the sunnah say it, it means right. If Ahlul Bid'ah say it, it's not right. They refute it for it. Sah? Are you with me? That same statement comes from a person of the sunnah, he says, correct, no problem. He means this. He, he means this. He's misguided for saying this statement. Ah, sah? That's something that's studied in the books of Aqidah. It's not double standards. Yes, Aluna, can they ask you? Ani sa'ati about the hour. Ayyana mursaha. When is, it, is, when, is, when is its arrival? Say to them, Muhammad. Fima anta min dhikraha. In what position are you to ask about the hour? Who are you to ask about the hour? This is what's said to them. Why are you looking for the hour? The reason is because what have you prepared for the hour? What have you done for the hour? Ila rabbika muntahaha To your Lord is what you're going to go back to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your finality. That's where you're going to finally be and you're going to stay with Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna ma anta You are only mundhiru aywuna for those who fear. Inna ma anta Muhammad You are mundhiru aywuna to who like it? Man yakshaha To the one who fears. Does that mean that the Prophet should only warn those who fear Allah? No. It means the only people who will benefit from your warning are those who fear Allah. Okay? Innama anta mundiru. The only ones who are going to benefit from your warning are who? Are the who? Who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another problem that we have today is that some people's da'wah is just based upon glad tidings. Good news. Sah? And it's like the Muslims today, they're just like good news. They don't like to be warned. Huh? Just tell us the good things. Yeah? No, it's both. The Prophet warned and scared the people, and he also put fear in them, and he also put hope in them. So there has to be what? Bishara, glad tidings, and there needs to be in dar, warning. Inama, you are nothing but. Mundiru, you are a warner. To who like it? Man yakshaha. The ones who will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning they're the ones who are going to benefit from your warning. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ka'annahum, it will be on the day for them. Yawma yarawnaha, the day they see it, it will be for them. Lam yalbathu, as though they did not remain. Illa ashiyatan aw duhaha, except for an afternoon or a morning. That's all it will feel to them. These people who disbelieve in the resurrection, they disbelieve in the hour striking and coming. They're going to see it with their own eyes. And they're not going to stay in their graves, the feeling that they have, except a zaman and yasira. It will feel like ashiyatan aw buhaha. The way that you come out of your grave, you will never know that you've been there for thousands of years or even hundreds of years. You will not feel that way. Everything will go fast. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying to you, the time that you're going to come to me is very fast. You only spend 70 maximum, or little do people go over that. And once you go into your grave, it's a couple of hundred of years or thousands of years, but you don't feel that. For you, it's a what? Ashiyatan aw duhaha. It's a, that's the reality of it. Inshallah ta'ala, we conclude there with Surah Al-Naza'at. Inshallah bi Allah al-Kareem. We're going to go into Surah Abasa next uh, Friday. Anything which I have said that was wrong, incorrect, faults, mistakes, slip of the tongue, is from me as shaitan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Any brothers who, their first time coming, uh, please 
take the register, write your name down. Um, yeah, write your name down on this uh, paper, inshallah, just in case the class ever gets cancelled, so you can be informed of it, and you 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 be informed of it.